Hey guys, it's Adam from Loose Pixel and welcome back. And welcome to my part two of artists and teachers online that I love, to be quite frank with you. Now remember, this is not an exhaustive list. This is just the second part of a series because there are countless artists out there that bring incredible value to this community, to this art, to this online community. And it's my very strong belief that every single one of us have our own unique contribution in our own way. And every one of us stands to benefit from supporting these artists online. I wanna share personal feelings. I wanna share my personal perspective. So I wanna to start today with an artist who has, in my humble opinion, has one of the most incredible records of bringing value to every bloody video she posts. And that's Istabrak. Every, I swear to God, there, there, <laughs> there's two posts that I jump on every single chance. If I see somebody, if I, yeah, if I get a little notification that, that this artist has posted a video, um, Ista Brack is one of the first ones I jump on. I click on her videos immediately. She's got live podcasts. She does critique videos where she does paint overs of, of, of other people's artwork. She has her own personal pieces. She talks about her personal life. She's very candid and very open about stuff. But here's the thing about Ista Brack that wh why I feel compelled to watch her videos all the time. It's because she's so polished in her in her approach to her artwork she's one of those artists that reflect in everything that i do like if you watch my videos whenever i get a compliment on a piece of artwork that i've produced where people say wow you've really leveled up wow you've really pushed this one to the next level guaranteed that istabrak may have very well played a part in me making that mental decision to go a little bit further, go a little bit further, go a little bit further, because it takes an incredible amount of patience and discipline to be able to produce a piece of artwork the way she does. It teaches me one of the most valuable lessons, and it's something I spoke about years ago on my channel. When you look at another piece, person's piece of art and you say, holy shit, I wish I could do that. Usually, what you're actually saying is, wow, I wish I had the patience to paint that because with enough work with enough patience with enough focus you can do anything but very often we just tap out we get tired we 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 get tired of doing the same thing so we move on and when i watch her videos she kind of brings down my speed a little bit she gets me back into a focused mood and when i watch her and i watch her critique she sometimes she critiques artwork and i'm looking at it going how the hell are you going to improve something like that She'll spend half an hour on it and take it to a whole new level. And it makes me go, yeah, you can push your work further. Here's another reason why I want to make sure everybody on listening to this video subscribes to her channel. And it's because of her in, incredible level of generosity. She's She is an open book to her audience, within reason, of course. I'm not... I'm not trying to get everybody to expect her to talk about all of her personal business but when it comes to art and growth and her and you know her artistic challenges she's I kind of get into this meditative state of self-acceptance listening to what she's talking about because um she's not afraid to talk about it and she's a woman who's been through an incredible amount of ex she's got a lot of experience she's been doing this for many years she's had a lot of ups and downs through her career and she's not afraid to wear her insecurities on her sleeve and say i'm having a great day i'm having a crap day and i listen to her and i just go yeah adam you're allowed to be yourself and i credit a lot of other artists for doing this as well and she very much is a part of that so if you're not aware of her channel there's nothing but value. You can get nothing but great things by going and subscribing to her channel. So of course, like everybody I'm going to be mentioning today or any artist I ever talk about on my channel, all of the information is in the, in the description below. Go and subscribe. Support her in any way you can. Istabrek. The next artist on my list is an artist who I've been admittedly, openly a fanboy of for many years before I actually had the honor of being able to meet him and do a podcast with him and get to know him on a little bit more of a personal level. And that is none other than Ahmed Alduri. Where do I start? <laughs> okay, here's one thing where I, I remember I'm talking about 
is I'm not just sharing general information about their channel and blah blah blah. No, this is personal. And the reason I'm sharing these these thoughts and feelings about these different artists is because there's something personal. I I follow them and there's something that connects with me on a personal level. And here's one of the things that that really matter to me about what it is that he shares online. And remember, you're talking to an old, you're listening to an older guy who's kind of seen a lot. I've kind of been there, done that. I've seen a lot of different people online. I've seen people come and go. And there's something of unique value that come from the artists that I talk about. And in Ahmed's case, he's not just one of the best teachers. I mean, as far as the material that he shares on his channel, I adore his videos. I also love the fact that he's incredibly, he's a very classical artist. I love he, he's one of those artists that you can see has bridged the gap between fantasy art of today to what you might see in a Sargent painting, to what you might see in a Lion Decker painting or in a Rockwell. He kind of bridges that gap. And I love living in that ecosystem as well. I teach this kind of stuff and I paint this way. He has an amazing grasp of the classics. And that to me, as I've mentioned in my last video with artists like Charles Bernard, is... He's, he's kind of tethering the old into the new, and he does so in, incredibly, in, a, in an incredibly contemporary way that is very, very valuable. But here's the other thing, and this is something that is personal to me on my channel and the content I like to share on my channel as, way, as well. He's an, incredibly, he's an incredibly emotional and human person. He's incredibly empathetic and he connects to people on a human level. And when we before we did our first podcast together, we had a chance to chat for, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes beforehand to kind of get to know each other and stuff like that. And we immediately connected, or at least I did. Maybe he thinks I'm a complete piece of shit, but I like him. <laughs> and I'm willing, I'm willing to be the less loved of the two, although he's a, he's, he's a very compassionate guy. But I didn't feel like, I, I didn't walk into his presence and a very experienced artist and feel like it's kind of like two artists uh, um, that are sharing art tips and, and, and flexing artistically. He had no concern on the art that I produced. He wanted to get to know me on a personal level. And he connected to me, he connected with me on a personal level in a very authentic way. And I went, wow, what a guy, you know, like he just, he had this incredible empathy. He, this, he was incredibly interested. He really embraces his humanity and he has an incredible sense of self. And when he, when you listen, when he listens to you, I felt heard, I felt listened to. And that unlocked a part of me as an artist, when we shared artistic things that was far more profound. I found that I could share more of me and I could feel more candid. And it kind of reminded me a lot, just kind of reflecting on the podcast we did together. And just anytime we've collaborated on anything or chatted together, it made me think of when John Mayer, an interview with John Mayer, when he did the Hot Ones Challenge. And the guy who was doing, no, it wasn't Hot Ones. It was, it was a radio show. And this guy obviously really cared about John Mayer's personal life. John Mayer is this celeb, huge megastar singer, a musician who gets a lot of that generic interview question stuff. And he could tell by this interviewer that this guy actually really gave a shit about him as a person, not as a celebrity, as a person. And John Mayer kept stopping every two seconds and going, holy shit, man, these are really good questions. Wow, you remember that? You care, You were actually paying... He really, he really, it really mattered to him that this guy recognized his humanity. And... I feel that way around Ahmed. I feel like he's looking at me. He's paying attention to me. He's listening to me. He cares about what's coming out of my mouth. He cares about me on a personal level. And that resonated into our podcast together. And people, that really resonated with people listening. They went, wow, this was a really awesome, I really liked this exchange between between the two of you. And I've watched, I've watched a lot of his podcasts with a lot of different artists when he collaborates with other people. And that's just him. People tend to be very at home around him as a person. And that kind of makes him a very kind of almost a father figure type of type of role in all of this. And you tie this in to what he shares artistically, what he shares technically. And you've got yourself probably, in my opinion, one of the most valuable, one of the most valuable contributions to our community. Again, he really helps to hold all of this together in a very, very important way. So yeah, to Ahmed, my God, I love you. You're just one hell of a man. And uh, yeah, all right. Now, 
the next artist. The next artist on my list doesn't have a YouTube channel. She doesn't have a YouTube channel. I don't think so. She's been in many interviews. She's an incredibly celebrated artist. And I have spoken about her countless times. And based on what I've experienced from her on a personal level, like having met her and attended workshops and stuff like this, have gotten some of the greatest lessons, artistic lessons for me personally as an artist and something that is translated into not only the kind of artist that I am, but the kind of teacher that I am. And that is Carla Ortiz. I saw her, the first time I saw her in person, I, well, I originally saw an interview with her. She had been interviewed on Schoolism on, on Bobby Chu's channel. And then um, uh, I saw her live. I, they hosted the Schoolism workshop, as I mentioned, at the school I taught at, uh, to the animation department. And out of all of those workshops, despite loving every single bloody presentation, the most memorable, the most impactful, the most meaningful one to me to date, and I've seen, been to two schoolism workshops, is Carla Ortiz. I kind of, if I, if I was to kind of compare her teaching style, because teaching isn't something she doesn't necessarily do all the time, although this other artist I'm comparing to is a teacher and has been doing this for years, is Anthony Jones. How she taught and what she taught were organic lessons. They were, this is what I've experienced just through trial and error. I've drawn 16 million drawings and these are the kinds of things that kind of stuck out to me. There, it wasn't taught in an academic way. It wasn't taught in a formulaic way. It was taught in a, oh, this is something that I've learned is really valuable to me over the years. As she was demonstrating doing a live painting during the workshop, and those things that she, I remember a couple of the lessons that she taught in particular were so impactful to me that I reacted out loud in front of all my students. <laughs> I was sitting in the front row. Carla didn't know me from a hole in a while. I was just a guy in the audience. But uh, she said a couple of lessons and I've, I'm sure my students know exactly what I'm talking about because I, I talk about it in every single class. Every time I teach this class, I always bring it up. But she said something and I went, oh, I just had this, uh, this kind of like epiphany, like, you know, like the whole, like, whew, you feel like the whole universe kind of implodes around your brain kind of thing. And I went, oh, she planted these little seeds of these artistic lessons in my brain that, that clarified decades of confusion artistically or helped me to overcome these challenges that I just didn't understand. I couldn't wrap my brain around these things. And she said that. And I went, uh, there's, it. she like unlocked it. And she fragmented, clarified and grouped and organized thousands of different conflicting thoughts in my brain with a quote. And I went, oh my God, that's it. And, and honest to God, I can credit Carla Ortiz to unlocking artistry in me that did not exist before then. She unlocked an entire, like a whole new level of art to me in multiple different ways. And I, and I quote her and I bring up her lessons and I expand on her lessons in my mentorship in multiple different ways over multiple different weeks because of how impactful it was. And it's, it's, these are lessons that didn't only impact me, but they impacted me over the long term. They're, they're lessons that grow with me. My only, my only, Pain. My only inner struggle is I wish she had a regular YouTube channel. I wish I could watch her videos <laughs> and listen to her. Here's another thing I'll mention about her. And this is just a personal thing. She, she's got it. The most infectious laugh you're ever going to, you're ever going to encounter. If you watch, just go and watch one of her, 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 uh, um, uh, schoolism Bobby Chu interviews or watch a live, uh, a live presentation where she's giving a lecture or something like that. You you walk into the same room with her and you, everybody everybody in that room has a smile on their face because they're watching her laugh and giggle. She's got this like, I don't know if it's a nervous tick or what, but it's unexpected and it lifts everybody's spirits. So there's like this joy that comes to being in her presence. Despite this very hardcore art that she produces, she's probably one of the bubbliest people I've ever met in my life. And it's incredibly infectious. So if you're ever in a bad mood and you're kind of feeling down in the dumps, just, just go watch one of her videos. And I guarantee you, you, that bad mood won't last longer than 10 seconds. You'll be pulled right out of it. So Carla Ortiz, 
you are my hero. I would say go and subscribe, but that's the tragedy of the end of this, of this part of my video. But fingers crossed, maybe she'll start a course or something like that online. And if she starts a course, by the way, I will be prepared. I will knock you over to get to the front of the line. Boxing Day style, okay? Now the last artist on my list, I have a hard time bringing up his name without this kind of, without a bit of a laugh in the back of my throat. And the reason being is he's a very complex character, this guy, that whose personality and he, the way he presents himself online is interpreted in a multitude of different ways. He's a very, there's a lot of depth and a lot of complexity to this guy. And I want to share my thoughts and feelings about him. I think it's my duty to share my thoughts and feelings about him, not only because of just generally how I feel about what he contributes to the community, but because of my unique background. Remember, these are my personal thoughts and feelings. And that is Ethan Becker. And yeah, now you know why I had that, that laugh in the back of my throat, right? He can be in my opinion, misinterpreted as being maybe a bit of a douche, that kind of overconfident, alpha male, uh, uh, know-it-all, maybe even a little bit bullyish type of, quote, persona, character, okay? I'm putting emphasis on those words, character, persona. And that persona and that character, how he presents himself, how he edits his videos, the kind of, that 80... <laughs> <laughs> that 80s background music, which is freaking gold, man. I remember I was born in 75. I know the, the 80s are is my era. I, I was a preteen in the 80s. It's your preteens that is generally the generation that you connect to on the most profound level. That's the kind of the impact. Once you're in high school and stuff like that, that's less your era. The, for me, high school is the 90s. But the 80s is the generation that that defined me, the karate kid and the, and the Star Wars and all that kind of stuff, right? That was me. And Ethan Becker captures that, the essence of that era perfectly. I'm totally digressing here, but I just want to throw that in here because that plays into his character, right? That plays even the way he, the kind of film, the eighties VHS kind of film grain thing he's got going on. is just freaking brilliant. But when you look at him superficially, if you pay attention to what he's sharing, if you forget about what it is he's actually sharing, the lessons he's teaching. But if you just look at his character, if you're younger or you don't know where he's coming from, that can be interpreted as this guy's a bit arrogant. And he's even made videos that kind of, but not entirely explain it. It could be interpreted as kind of like helping to understand who he is. Because he had a whole video where he's talking about confidence versus arrogance right? Being conceited versus just having confidence in what you do, but branded in his very kind of alpha <laughs> type of character. So it could be like a sorry, but not, not sorry type of type of presentation in a sense. But I want, I want to share a deeper opinion about him because like I said, animation, what is an animator? What character, what personality traits play into being an animator? These are personality traits that I possess in me. And this is one of the reasons why I, I, I really, really love what it is he shares online. He's an actor. An animator is an actor who just doesn't stand behind the camera. An animator is a person who can, is, has the ability to empathize with and live in the shoes of different people. You have to be able to kind of to, to caricature and feel different characters from one to the next. You're flipping back and forth. What kind of personality trait, what kind of quality as a human being does it take to be able to do something like that? Well, every animator I've ever met have always possessed this quality. Empathy. An incredibly rich sense of empathy. The ability to feel other people's feelings. That requires the opposite of what his character his persona portrays on his channel his persona is just there to entertain you and he does a damn good job of it he's just he's just a fun guy who's putting on this really fun character with his dog and his glasses and his shit it's just a character but in order for him to be able to be that character he has to be able to 
feel that character. And of course, being in the States and being in the South and stuff like that, of course, it's a character that he feels confident doing because he's surrounded by those types of people all the time. It's, it's a caricature of how other people interpret who he's supposed to be. And he's even described this on his channel. But if you're younger, if you kind of have these mixed feelings about him as a person and how he presents himself, what I want you to do is look past his character, look past his persona. It's just an act and pay attention to what he shares. Pay attention to what he's saying objectively. Forget about the tone. Listen to the words, listen to the message, listen to what he's teaching, what he's sharing. And when push comes to shove, when he's talking about something real, when he's talking about something serious, when, for instance, when the whole, the whole George Floyd thing happened, I spoke about what Ethan said in my video, and I don't take that stuff lightly. This to me is an extremely serious topic that I was very, very emotionally impacted by. I quoted Ethan in my video, not because he's an insensitive alpha male douchebag, but because I, I recognize the incredible level of compassion he had and the incredible amount of risk he took in sharing a very candid feeling, but through, but through the, the, the mouth and the mind of an artist who has an incredible, and an animator, who I might add, who has an incredible sense of empathy and compassion. It was a very, very, must have been an incredibly difficult thing for him to share. And when he shares his lessons and he shares his philosophy and he shares his opinions of different people, like for instance, you know, like different YouTubers who might have, you know, they might be under the knife because they said something stupid or presented themselves in a way that made them unlikable online or any, like the whole honey and absinthe video that he produced. There was a man whose goal was to help you to understand what somebody else's intention was. And he, 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 his effort was to save somebody and save somebody's career because, you know, cancel culture. Somebody says something that offends somebody or somebody might have a tone of voice or, a, or, or vocabulary that makes people go, it's a bit off-putting, right? And he, he, made, he used his energy, he used his time to be able to help somebody else grow. That's in essence what that Honey and Absinthe video was. And he did it in a very constructive way. This is what she said that might have rubbed people the wrong way. And this is how you, uh, the better way to have said it, recognizing what her intention was. Is that the act of an alpha male? Is that an act of a douchebag? No, that's an act of somebody who really gives a shit and who cares about the outcome of other people's lives, who cares about the outcome of other people's careers. And he did it. He, he did it in a very teacherly type of way. He took a lesson from one person and he redirected it to the whole community as a teacher would do. When I listen to him and I listen to his lessons and I listen to where he's coming from, I get what he's sharing and I love the way he presents it because I see the character for the character, but I also see the man for the man. I see the heart behind what he, what he does, but he's a tough guy. He comes from a tough place. He's got, he's, he's not going to bullshit you. He's kind he heals through holding a mirror in front of your face and saying, Hey, this is who you are. I do the same thing, but I have my own way of doing it. But he doesn't, I don't feel he does it in a way that's offensive. I don't feel that he does it in a way that's insensitive. I don't think he's limited in scope. In fact, quite the opposite. I feel that Ethan, I feel his lessons are insanely good. Like I've learned some incredibly good, like just something stupid, like for instance, you know, don't shoot photo references, shoot video references. I'm like, do you know how much that solved in my workflow? I would, when I would shoot references, I would shoot 70 or 80 shots, getting my camera set up, setting up the lighting, making sure I'm in the right angle, making sure that the, my fabric is flowing over my shoulder the right way to simulate that cape. Instead, do it in one take, shoot a video, move around, act, and just freeze frame and, and screen cap the one that you want. Do you know how much that fixed? Do you know how much that helped? Or little simple principles. He comes up with some, some cute little phrase like, when in doubty, one finger outy. It might sound stupid, but he's solving problems that artists struggle with sometimes for years. And he has these little techniques, these little gems that he's picked out over the years. And package all of that, in my opinion, one of the most fantastic performances you could ask for. I mean, remember, he's an art YouTuber. This guy's not, he doesn't have like a $60 million budget to put some video together. Pay attention to how 
his incredible sense of timing. Pay attention to his how he how he plays with music, how he plays with acting, how, the, <laughs> how he can do these like multi-layer characters where he's laughing and then that laugh slowly dips down into a, a, a no more laughter, you know, and you kind of gets intense on you. I'm sitting there going, this guy is so fucking good at doing this. And it's such a full package. And I'm just sitting there going, God damn. And I finish watching his videos and I very often feel out of breath, just going, oh, that was a hell of an experience. But I wouldn't be sharing a single bloody word of this if I didn't think that wrapped in all of these lessons, wrapped in all of this wisdom and this experience that he's sharing with you, wasn't the core of a really, really good guy. And I know that's a very weak phrase, good guy. But he's just a good guy. And I think that from my age and my perspective and my background and being an animator as well and recognizing the talent that goes into what he's doing and the compassion that goes into what he's doing and the empathy that it takes to be able to capture a character like that and communicate on that level is what I want to shine a light on. And it's for that reason that I want to share my voice and share my feelings on him and why I want to share my feelings on Istebrak and on Carla Ortiz and on Ahmed al -Duri people who I feel that this community would would have a permanent scar if any of them weren't a part of it. And I am eternally proud, at least for now, if not forever, to be a part of it. I'm honored. And with that said, I love you with all my heart and happy painting. Take care.